The oil and gas industry remains one that's dominated by men. The Boston Consulting Group estimates that only one out of five people within the sector is female. And as you rise up the ranks, diversity decreases. At the executive level, approximately one in every 10 people is female. This is what makes our next guest rare. Yvette Solomi is the managing director of three subsidiaries under the Sahara Energy banner, PWSL, SO Energy, and SO Aviation, all based in Ghana. She joins me today to talk about her journey to the top of Africa's oil and gas industry and what could be done to improve the diversity in that industry. Yvette, welcome to Business Edge. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, and thank you for having me. So you're a managing director in the African oil and gas industry. So let's start from there. How did you find yourself in oil and gas? Okay, well, my journey so far, let's say it's um, opportunity meeting preparation. So my past experiences from my previous jobs also prepared me for a seamless transition. However, it's worthy to note that um, I started in Sahara as a, an officer on the officer level and rose through the ranks to be where I am right now. Um, I went through the various departments learning on the job and I find myself where I am. I would also say it's also by God's grace. All right. So managing director of a leading retail business, as I said, about three companies that um, sit under your banner and sit under your desk. And it's really in a rare position that you actually occupy. So as a woman, what challenges have you encountered climbing that corporate ladder? <laughs> OK, I would say for challenges, um, challenges would always come up. However, is the mindset on how you address these challenges for me. How I address this challenge is there are three main things that I look at. The most important one is resilience, to have the resilience to go through everything and face these challenges head on and try to avoid all these, overcome all these roadblocks that I faced. Also, I would look at perseverance. I need perseverance for when the going gets tough because it does get tough. And so in times like that, it's perseverance that gets me through. Most importantly, the third one is I am intentional about mentoring the next generation of women coming up because that's equally important as well. So one thing that I know women in top positions, particularly like yours, tend to, um, I guess the word might be to suffer from is this imposter syndrome where you feel in one situation that you're really not the person for this job. Do you really have the expertise? Do you really have uh, the background? Is it really someone like you they're looking for? And it's something that I myself and a number of people um, in this industry also feel. How do you get through that situation of imposter syndrome? OK, so let's say, you know, there are stereotypes everywhere. And stereotype is what it is, stereotype. And for me, um, going through the ranks and rising through to be where I am is like a typical example for me. And that proves that you can do the job. I have been on the managerial, um, the managing director role for the past three years and more. And I've proven that I can do it. And I also, in Sahara, my company, we encourage a lot of women. You find we have an amazing blend of women in managerial positions as well. So that also is something that motivates the young ones coming up. So when we talk about gender diversity and representation, we also have to acknowledge the status quo that is in the industry. So women make up about 22% of people in the sector, and then that number drops to 13% when you get to senior management roles. With oil and gas, a lot of people still tend to see men. Once you talk about this industry, it's sort of visualized. We visualize men more than we do the fact that there are women who are active and participating. So let's get into that. How are women really participating in the oil and gas uh, industry now? Well, I would say that this perspective, this will, be, this will come down to one's perspective mainly. And also, like I said earlier on, there are a lot of women coming up in roles all over globally. Gradually, you see women taking up very important roles and all that. And that is something that we should be proud of. Um, women need to support women more. And then we also need to encourage the young ones coming up only one out of five people within the sector is female and when you go up further one in every 10 people is uh, female as well so we see numbers which show us clearly that men continue to dominate in the industry 
So that also means that they hold key positions that can determine women's participation in the industry. How do you think men can be good allies for women in the oil and gas industry? Okay, for that, I think, um, like I said earlier on, gradually women are taking very important roles. And in most companies, nobody is an island of their own. You will need to work with people. So if you find more women in managerial positions, in all these positions, they need to work with these men. And getting the job done is most important. And women have proven themselves over and over again that they can do it. Aside that, being we women are wives as well, we have families and all that, we are able to manage all these and still um, deliver on the job. So that's something that I think it's gradually gaining recognition. Mm. So if that beyond increasing women's participation in the industry, there's also, of course, a prevailing belief that to be part of this oil and gas industry, whether male or female, you have to have something to do with engineering. But that's really not also the case most of the time. So for the industry itself, what can it do to improve the knowledge and awareness of some of the full range of opportunities that are available in the industry? Okay, so this is a very interesting one. You don't need to be an engineer to be in the oil industry. Take me, for example, I'm not an engineer. Um, I'm not a technical person, but I find myself to be the managing director of a company. So you don't need to be an engineer to be in the oil and gas industry. However, we have technical people in the industry. So for those technical bits, yes, we still have the engineers, we have all the um, technical people that are needed to get the job done, but you still do not need to be an engineer to be in the oil industry. All right, Yvette, thank you so much for your time today. It was good to see you and, of course, speak to you as a woman in the oil and gas industry, one who has broken through that glass ceiling and is uh, almost in a league of your own. How do you feel sometimes when you enter a room and it's not by necessarily your choice, but you're either one of very few women or probably the only woman in the room? Well, I would say I feel proud and I feel proud because I'm representing the other women there. So it's a good thing for me and... I'm glad that I can be an inspiration to the women out there and the young ones coming up. All right, Yvette, thank you so much for joining me on Business Edge. Thank you for having me. All right. We're going to get into the stories we're tracking on NC4 to watch, but that will come your way after this quick timeout.